When you're throwing a plate, uh, which is a very flat thing against the wheel head, it's not as easy to get your form off the wheel as it is with a, a cylinder and a bowl. So you are going to need a device called a bat, and you're going to need to attach that to the wheel head. My wheel has bat pins, and it has a system to where I can just easily attach it to the wheel head, but sometimes you have to throw a patty. Basically, you're throwing a plate onto the wheel head, attaching the bat, and then you're going to be throwing your form on top of that. So there's also the possibility that you can go out and, and buy bats and bat pins and make the investment. Um, it makes the process a little easier. So process starts much the same, but of course we're using more clay, three pounds of clay for the plate. So it might require a little more force at those designated times, which is right at the beginning. So I'm just gonna secure that to the wheel head first of all. And angle iron claw compression. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So you can see where I'm exerting my force right on that one, two count. Two, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Just because I'm using more clay doesn't mean I take longer centering. At least not with up to three pounds. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Two, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so at this point, we're ready to proceed with the plate. The clay is centered, three pound ball of clay is centered. And what we're gonna do is, instead of stopping here at the kind of hockey puck shape, we're just gonna take it down a little farther allowing my thumb to just make that indentation into the center a little bit and that's going to assist my right hand. Now you want to have a thin skin of water between your hand and the clay because the friction will really throw you off. Even better suggestion is that you move quickly and confidently at this point. So a little water on the clay and on your hand Wheel's going full speed. You push down and out towards 11 o'clock. So you're, you're grounded, you're, you're supporting your other hand. And now I'm going to sort of push that ledge down with my sponge, going a little slower. Can have a little overhang there, so just fix that, push that down. Add a little water. Make a little divot for your hand to sit in, or your fist, and push out towards 11 o'clock. And we're working towards about half an inch, so I'm gonna stop there. Now if you're, getting, if you're getting hung up and you're feeling the friction, just stop and add more water. So now I'm gonna start compressing with my sponge. Moving that sponge turning the sponge um, when one area gets um, filled with clay. Now you want a good half inch at this point. If you make it too thin, it's just harder. It just makes things harder when you make them thinner. So it's better to have a consistent wall thickness I do a lot of trimming with plates, and I find that, again, you have a form that's taking up more space, you might make it a little thicker than you would make a cylinder that's only one pound. So as you increase your amount of clay, you might think about also increasing your, your thickness slightly. So this is when this stage, this compression stage, is the most important. And you want to compress the heck out of the base so that you don't get those unruly S cracks. You know, and you're really, you know, at this point, you're exerting a fair amount of force. 
onto the clay. So, you know, support one hand with the other, use your body weight to lean into it. So compression, compression, compression. I first compress with the sponge. And focusing on getting this nice and flat and even, consistent wall thickness. So I've used my sponge a few for a few compressions. Now I'm gonna use the side of my thumb for a few compressions. So from three o'clock, to the center. Will's going fast. And this is just so that uh, my thumb can sort of address a greater surface area than one finger could. So that's the reason I use my thumb. And finally, I'm going to use a rib. So you can use a wooden rib. You can come in with a fancy rib. I'll bring that in later, but right now I'll just compress with the wooden rib. So you can take it inside out, outside in. And this is going to really let you know if you got a flat surface here. Okay. So it's nice and flat. Now I'm going to cut under the side right about three o'clock with my right hand. I'm going to start with my pinky followed by the finger next to it and the middle finger finally. And they're just going to slide underneath that rim. I'm pressing my fingernails against the bat. You can see where my finger's at right there. However far you push in, basically you're establishing where I want the foot. Just going to do a little compression here. Now I'm going to take my wooden tool and I'm going to hold it at this angle. I'm going to put it underneath the wall and I'm just going to press the wall against the form where the uh, wheel meets the bat. With that motion, I trimmed the base. So th um, this is the action that we usually take at the very end when we're trimming the piece before we take it off the wheel. But since the form, the plate is very flat at the very end, we're not going to be able to get under there. So we do it now. All right. Now I'm going to go ahead and compress the rim. And this is slightly different from the way that I hold my hand when I'm up here compressing the rim of a bowl or a cylinder. Instead of being like this, just because of the shape of the plate, I actually twist my hand this way. And the next thing we do is a pull at the um, wall of the plate. This is a slow motion and I do it with completely dry hands. If you get too much water on this rim, it just wants to really respond to gravity and, and you, could, you could lose it. It could get very weak. Um, and actually, you just really don't need to. You can, you can do this in one pull. So much like with the bowl, we don't really want to disturb this surface of the plate. So we're, we're doing more pushing from behind. This is a slow motion. I'm going to really compress from underneath, pushing more with my right hand and just supporting the surface with my left hand really. So I'm just going to do one pull so you, you really get a feel for where you want it to be right at the very beginning opposed to taking three pulls to establish the thickness of this form. It's just not necessary. With the cylinder and the bowl, I allowed myself three uh, poles to get it to maximum height. With the plate, I try to do it in just one. Okay, now I'm taking this tool, mainly because it has that curve right at that edge there. I'm just turning my left hand and supporting the rim from behind, putting this, the curved tip 
kind of into that little edge, corner of the plate. Push down with the rib while I'm pushing up from behind. And you know, I don't push down too far. I like to keep it up, and if I want a flatter plate, if I decide that I want a flatter plate, I can put this bat back on the wheel when it's a little more set up and push it flatter. But if I push it too flat right from the get-go, um, sometimes it really responds to gravity and goes too far. So my last step is a little rim compression. Okay, and there we go. A plate. Take it off the wheel. So you wouldn't be able to do that if you didn't have a bat. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.